Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. I'm getting set up here to do some catfishing. There's a big body section of skipjack. That's the bait I'm gonna be using today. But I've just got anchored down here on the Tennessee River. It's a few minutes before dawn. And I'm getting baited up in an area that you saw in a recent video. I fished out here last week, hoping to hook into a big flathead. That was the goal when I came out here. Now, I caught some fish on that trip. I got some uh, blue cats, got flathead, got striped bass, but unfortunately, just didn't get the quality of fish I was hoping for. Now, was my timing off that day? Was it just because of my bait? I wasn't using great quality bait that day. You know, who knows? But I thought I'm gonna come back out here and I'm gonna try it again when I got some better quality bait. So. What I'm gonna be using today is these fresh skipjack. And you can see that's a big skipjack. I've got some in my cooler that are in that kind of two and a half, three pound range. And they're good and fresh. And out here on the Tennessee River, especially during the springtime months, summer months when it's good and warm. And you know, it's not really warm yet here in East Tennessee. We've had a cold spring, but our water temps this morning here, 63 degrees. And you know, once you get water temps really above about high mid mid to high 50s and up it's hard to beat skipjack for bait out here on the tennessee river so i'm gonna be putting on some big baits and we're gonna see what we can pull out of here i'm hoping for a flathead but you know i don't discriminate if a big blue comes along or striped bass i'm all right with that too there's that body section more of the tail part Send it down. It's uh, like I said, a few minutes before dawn. Current flow out here is minimal right now. They've got like one generator on at the dam, which I ain't gonna lie, I don't mind. We've had so much current flow this spring that I haven't really been able to get out here. I'm late getting out here to this part just because we've had so much flow. So now that it's slowed down a little bit, I can actually get out here and fish this area and keep myself safely anchored in the kayak. It's not that I couldn't fish this area before, it's just doing it in the safest manner as possible. So, there's the last bait I'm putting down. We've got a four rod set up today. Anchored down here, 24 feet where I'm at at the moment. And so my baits are gonna be down directly into the kayak, approximately 21, 22 feet deep. Got that on a Carolina rig. Must have Demon Circle hooks, the 10 aught size. Got my usual ugly stick rods. People ask me about my gear all the time. Everything is listed down in the video description. I got links to everything there. So I don't go over it in every video because my gear don't really change. I like to use the same things because it works for me. But all that stuff's listed there if you're interested. So we got our lines out. We're fishing. I'm gonna fish this morning probably till 11ish. We'll put in a few hours, soak these baits. See what we can hook into. That rod got thumped right there. Got thumped. Let's see what happens to that. He's on there. Watch it swim. There he goes. Let's pick up. Yeah, buddy. First one of the morning here. We hooked up. He thumped it. I turned the camera on. I wasn't sure if he was there or not. Oh, it's just a blue. The way I felt that thump, I thought it might be a flathead. But just a small blue with that bait literally wedged in his mouth. You see there. He barely get it in his mouth fish gave us our bait back <laughs> that's a win buddy <laughs> there he is skunk buster we'll uh, let him go I'm gonna rehook this piece of skipjack because it's still it's still good shape man You're using these big thick pieces of skipjack there's so much blood juices and oils and all that down in there it takes a while even when you've got current flow which I don't have a lot of out here today it takes a while to wash out a big piece like that so 
assuming the fish gives it back to you, you can oftentimes catch several fish on one piece. Oh, hello, hello. Oh, look at that drag stripping, man. Look at that. Goodness, that's gotta be a striper. That's a striper right there, man. The way he hit it was stripping like that. The way he's still pulling it. Woo! Those strappers pull hard. <laughs> Goodness. They fun though. I don't usually catch a lot of them when I'm suspending baits, but every once in a while it happens. It's always a welcome surprise. I never complain about getting a striper. I've said it before, they can steal my bait anytime. I don't target them specifically very often. Usually when I do, I go after them with artificials. But uh, they're always a welcome treat when I get one while I'm catfishing. Oh, he's got mother line over there. I'm surprised he ain't come up. We may get surprised or something. This just be a blue cap. <laughs> This may just be a really hard pulling blue or something. Man. Oh, it is a striper. He had me. There for a second, I thought it might just be a big blue, but uh, no, it's a stripe. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's what I want to see. Woo! Look at that thing right there. A welcome surprise on this cold spring morning here. All right, let's just throw him on the board here, and we're gonna let him go right quick. I don't, uh, I don't keep these stripers out of the water very long. They don't do good. Well, that one right there, he's over 38 inches, almost 38 and a half. Nice. All right, here we go, y'all. I hate that that sun's behind me. I'm not gonna get a good picture, but I believe I don't see the broken lines on this one. This one might be a, a actual striper here. I don't know. They all strippers to us, whether they're actual striped bass or a hybrid. And they hard pull and I like them. <laughs> okay, let's let him go. I don't want to keep him out any longer. Oh, oh goodness. There he goes. Yeah, buddy. You know, sometimes y'all, them strippers, you get on into the warmer months when our water temps are hot. Even if you land them quick, let them go quick, they'll still go belly up on you. But with our water temps right now still being cool, uh, they typically do pretty well if you get them back in the water quick. So, heck yeah, man. That one ate a skipjack body section. Got my two lines here wrapped up, but that's okay. It is worth it for a fish like that. Let's get another bait on there. Well, there's just another hunk of skipjack. I'm going to do something a little different, though. I'm going to change my setup here slightly. I was suspending all four baits because that's the way I love to catfish. That's the way I love to fish, period. The, the fights are more intense, the takedowns are better. But as I mentioned, most of the time when I catch striped bass, it's when my baits are cast out. I don't get a whole lot of them suspended. And since you know my last trip out here last week, I got a striped bass, got that one now. I'm going to take my two front rods, I'm going to cast them out and then I'll still have my back two here suspended. So maybe if there's more some, some more strippers in here, 
we'll be able to catch them on these rods that are cast out and then still have our two rods here in the back suspended for any cats that come along or maybe any, some more stripers too you just never know nevertheless I'm gonna mix it up Alright guys, it's about 11 a.m. right now, and you can probably see here, I have changed locations. Out there in the main channel, there's a truck go by. Out there in the main channel where I was at, the wind started to pick up around 9-ish this morning. And it just kind of kept getting progressively and progressively worse. It was blowing the kayak upstream, had me spinning. I'm looking on wind finder and it says 4 miles an hour, and I'm like, there's no way. If that's 4 miles an hour, I'll kiss your hind end. But it's putting a lot of chop out there and I'd, I'd move those two front rods I had them cast out in front of me but I hadn't ended up reeling those in just because my kayak kept getting spun upstream there from the wind so I said this ain't working out I gotta make a change and I'm looking down here in the creek that I launched in and it's kind of calm here from where it's protected from the wind and I said you know I'm gonna do something that I don't do very often at all I'm gonna go hit the shallows and so what I've done is I've moved back here uh, over here to my left there's a bank but then there's a, a bridge that goes over and this creek it's a you know fairly wide creek but it comes together right here under that bridge and then back in here it opens up again real shallow a uh, few inches to a couple feet deep over here but here where this bridge crosses over there's that main you know the old creek channel it's about five feet deep so I've had my baits cast over in it for the last couple hours and uh, that decision to move back here and fish the shallows did not pan out. It reminded me of why I don't fish the shallows very often. I've had some taps here, you know, probably little channel cats or turtles or something, but I ain't got nothing back in here. And so that was a mistake. But, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting that wind out there, so I kind of had to, you know, find a place to hide from it. And when I did, I just hid from the fish too. But, yeah, I came out here this morning kind of hoping to get that big flathead, which didn't happen, but I did find a really nice striper. So it's a, you know, it's a positive for me. I'll take that. But you know, two fish and about four and a half hours out here on the water uh, wasn't how I hoped to spend the day, but I ain't never going to complain when I get a good fish. So I'm probably going to go ahead and post this video just because, you know, this is, this is real world fishing, man. I'm not, a, I'm not a glitz and glamour type of YouTube channel. I'll show it to you like it is. If I'm on the fish, I'm on them. If I'm not, well, some days I'm just not. But uh, anyway, we'll see if we can't do some better fishing in the next video. I'm probably going to get away from this spot. You know, I've hit it twice here in the last week, just fingers crossed, hoping. But I'm a little late on it. Uh, and in years past, when I have gotten some really good flatheads off this area, it's usually been April, early to mid-April. And... You know, it's mid-May here now, so I'm a little late getting out to this section of the river, and I may have just missed my window. So, uh, it is what it is, but we'll find some fish again here eventually, and I'll be back on the water here soon. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.